Welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ. Here's your host, David Scooby Sangwell. Hi guys and welcome to the BartenderHQ.com podcast and today I'm going on a bit of a rant. Um, uh, I know this is something that uh, a lot of people share these on Facebook and it's the kind of um, 10 reasons, right, let's grab this article that I'm actually working from. Uh, the top 10 reasons your bartender hates you. Um, now these articles kind of wind me up a little bit. I have probably shared them myself in the past. Um, and there are some that are really good and some that uh, kind of don't make any sense and are just purely there to get people to click on the uh, article. Um, but they're always quite negative and they're always about things that your customer does that annoys you. Well, the, these 10 reasons, there's pretty much nothing on here that is not at least partially the bartender's fault. So let's kind of work our way down. So number 10 on this list is you think the garnish tray is your buffet table. Lemons and limes and olives are not for you. When you stick your fingers in the garnishes, you're giving the next person who orders a mojito a mouthful of your germs. Um, so, yeah, completely understand that. But why, for one thing, is your garnish tray where your customers can reach it anyway? Um, make sure that everything that you need to work with that you don't want your customers to touch is not somewhere that they're going to pick it up and play with it. Now, I've had people come up to me uh, at the nightclub and grab a tin and try and flip it and drop it on the floor and look like a tit, that's fine. You look like an idiot, you can't break my, uh, my shakers, so knock yourself out, look silly, and uh, give it back to me and I'll show you how it's done, no problems. Um, but my garnishes and all my fresh fruit, all that sort of stuff, lives underneath the counter, basically at the back of my ice well, so that it's right there where I can grab it. Um, so, if this is a problem for you, move your garnishes. Don't put them where your customers are going to reach for them and, and help themselves to your lemons and your limes and your cherries. Cool. No problems. Sorted. So, number nine. You expect free drinks. You ask your bartender for a free drink. You're eliminating your chances of ever getting one. Free drinks are a privilege. Occasionally granted to those who are polite, tip generously, and refrain from causing a scene. Okay. That's fair enough. Um... We don't want to be giving free drinks away unless it is part of our promo tab, which I know a lot of bars run. That's cool. And it can work really, really well for um, for gaining a regular following at your bar. A couple of rules for those free drinks. Never give away um, two free drinks to the same person on two consecutive uh, visits. So if they come in, um, if they come in every couple of days... Make sure the first day they come in, if they get a free drink that day, they don't get one the next visit, but they can have one the one after, and they can't have one. So alternate so that they don't think to themselves, I get a free drink every time I come in. Second one, never give anyone their first drink free, uh, because then there's no incentive for them to stay and purchase more drinks. If they're sat there for two or three beers and you offer them their second one or their third one free if they're a regular customer and if it makes sense and if you've got permission to do it from your bar manager um, then that makes sense but don't do it just straight off the bat and uh, oh do you want a drink first one's on me no doesn't make any sense and that's why uh, I kind of disagree with a lot of the bars out in sort of Spain and the party places where they're like oh come on in you get a free drink and you get a free shot when you enter and all this sort of thing why um Make sure they're actually going to spend some money with you before uh, you decide to give them stuff for free. Um, you think you're exempt from the law. Uh, your bartender has heard everything. You left it at home. You put it through the wash. It got taken away after like, your last DUI. So this is basically about not having ID. Fair enough. Um, but you should make sure, for one thing, that you've got the signage in your bar that says we ID. Um, and make sure you are IDing people that have any possibility of being underage and in fact uh, most bars in the UK at least have a challenge 21 or challenge 25 um, the higher it is uh, the less problem you will have because if you say well if you look under 25 I'm going to ask you for ID then you're not going to really be offending anyone um, so that's absolutely fine but make sure you've got everything uh, backed up that sort of says well look this is the policy 
and make sure as well if you're a bar manager that you are backing up your bartenders when they do ID people and you're making sure that your bartenders are asking for ID as well. Um, on another note, if you work in a nightclub, don't rely on your door staff to do all the IDing. If you get somebody that comes up to the bar that's come in and past your door staff and you think they may be underage, still ID them. If they've got it with them, absolutely fine. There's no problems. If they haven't brought any with them, then you need to be asking questions of your door staff. Um, but you need to protect yourself and your business. You ask for a surprise. Want a surprise? Here's a glass of water. Indecision means nothing to your bartender who makes hundreds of different drinks per day. And don't even think about ordering a drink you made on the in that you saw on the internet but can't remember the name of. It's not your bartender's responsibility to stay up to date on the latest mixed drink concoctions on YouTube. Well, actually, yeah, it is. If you're going to be a bartender, especially if you're going to be in an upscale place that can make drinks that aren't on your menu, you should know what's fashionable. You should definitely know what are the cool drinks at the moment you should potentially have a specials board if it's possible within your uh, business and uh, you can account for your drinks that sort of thing um, so if your bar if your guest wants a recommendation I, I wouldn't say when they ask you for a surprise just make them whatever you want um, ask what they're into what they normally drink and come up with something that's good and you're adding value for that guest don't just say Oh, here's a Long Island. You know, that's not going to get you repeat customer and you're not going to have uh, that guest raving about you. If you recommend a drink that they will really enjoy based on what they already drink, you're, pretty, uh, you're in a pretty good position for them to be coming back and telling all of their friends how great it was. Seems to make sense for me. So, next one, number six. Uh, you destroy everything around you. The bar is not the place for your inner child to come out and destroy everything inside. Leave your coaster alone. Please stop breaking the straws into a dozen tiny pieces. Um, all right, but again, this is uh, this comes down to having your bar laid out properly, not having crap lying around that people will disintegrate. I mean, if you're using the paper like beer coasters, I think you probably need to. Um, have a look at that again. I mean, they're probably like brewery owned ones, that sort of thing. You will find them in pubs, but if you're in a decent cocktail bar, you're either going to have uh, a paper napkin or you're going to have uh, in the real upscale places cloth napkins, um, that sort of thing that you're putting your drinks down on. Those can't be destroyed. Um, you will get people that will immediately pull the straw out of their drink and just leave it on the side. That's fine. Just make sure you're cleaning your bar top up. But if you're leaving crap all over your bar top, don't be surprised. And flyers and everything else. Keep your bar top clean. Keep it clear. This is a place to present drinks and to enjoy them, not to be bombarded with loads of little bits of crap that are lying around the bar. Uh, and if they then do pull them to bits or draw on them or whatever, it's your own fault. No problems. Um, you attempt to push in the front of the line. Your bartender notices who arrives first at the bar. Flashing money, waving or snapping won't make her serve you any faster. Um, well, this is all well and good as long as you have got a bartender that is paying attention to who's arriving first at the bar. Um, it's something that every bartender should be doing and should be very good at. But it doesn't necessarily mean that that happens everywhere. Um, so, if you've got people that are shouting... As long as you do know who is first, brilliant. Tell them, no, I'm just looking after these guys, and then I'll be with you. Even better, if you're multi-serving, and you can check out my article on Bartender HQ, which is called uh, Six Steps to Becoming a Multi-Serving Jedi, um, you'll be able to take their order as soon as they get up to that bar anyway. You're not going to be waiting until you finish serving this guest. You take their order, make their drinks, give them their drinks, ring it up, move on to the next one, take the order, make the drinks, ring it up. No, you, what you want to be doing is taking as many orders as you possibly can because you'll find that certain drinks are duplicated. You can make two of the same drink in the shaker or in a blender even better because blended drinks take forever. And uh, if you can double up in the blender, they actually blend better as well. Um, so make sure you're multi-serving. You haven't got to worry about these guys trying to push in. Uh, and obviously keep your head up when you're serving as well, so you do know exactly what order people walked into your bar. Uh, number four, you complain that the bartender is making your drink wrong. Well, if uh, if you have a set recipe in your bar, that's absolutely fine, and uh, that's cool. But 
if your guest wants it a specific way and you know, especially if you know that this is a guest that likes their drinks in a specific way, make sure you're checking with them exactly what kind of drink they want. If they order, for example, a Manhattan uh, and you make a dry Manhattan, they wanted a sweet or a perfect Manhattan, you haven't made their drink wrong. Uh, well, you've made their drink wrong, but it's not their fault. You didn't check what they were actually after, what drink they were expecting. Um, if you have a drink on your menu that's called a Long Island iced tea and it happens to be some weird concoction of uh, Malibu peach schnapps and cranberry juice um, because obviously, as I say, there's no worldwide standardization of drinks um, and that's what's on your menu is a Long Island iced tea but they're expecting a regular one you should probably think to yourself, well, these guys might not be expecting peach schnapps and Malibu when they order a Long Island iced tea. I'll check if they wanted the classic version or our house version. No problems at all. So, that kind of rules that one out a little bit. Um, I do agree, though, that if you have a specific spec in your bar and somebody orders that drink, that is the way it should be made. It shouldn't be every bartender has their own way of making the drinks within your bar, especially if it's a classic or if it's something that has got a sort of well-known recipe. It, you should be kind of sticking to those. Um, you demand, this is number three, you demand an extra strong drink. No duh, you want your drink extra strong. You didn't come to the bar to read the Bible, you came to get drunk. Okay, well, if you have that kind of guest coming in, you quite possibly um, are either working in the wrong kind of bar because it is the kind of place that people are going to get drunk rather than to enjoy a drink and socialise. Um, that's one thing, but there are those bars out there. Um, but looking knowledgeable, making sure that you uh, completely come across as somebody that knows exactly what they're doing um, is the main way to sort of combat this. When I free pour in the UK, which is not something that happens in the majority of bars, it does in good cocktail bars, um, and obviously... Nowadays, especially the mixology type bars, are going back to a lot of jigger pouring as well. Um, but when I free pour, which I test myself on every day, so I'm confident that I'm accurate, because I'm also flaring and smiling and keeping my head up and holding conversations with people, people don't think they're getting a, a weak drink. They don't have any doubt that they're getting what they're supposed to get. Um, also, people that ask for no ice, this is a, a perfect... Uh, opportunity for you to educate your guest on exactly why we put the ice in there. Um, as hopefully you guys all know, we don't put the ice in there to reduce the amount of liquid. That is a side effect of the fact that the drink is going to be colder for longer and not watered down. If you put a small amount of ice in that drink, you will see how quickly it disappears. And that is then water that is watering down a fairly cool drink rather than an ice cold drink, which is how we want them to be consumed. Um, with a good amount of ice in there, large surface area on the ice, um, and the ice touching each other to avoid that dilution overdoing it. So, if you've got people asking for an extra strong drink, you can always do it, you can always offer the extra shot, but say that you will need to charge them. Uh, you are wasted. We're not sure if you noticed this, but you got trashed. You just kicked a chair, grabbed a girl's ass, and knocked over an entire dr tray of drinks in one fell swoop. Um, okay, so this is basically about people uh, who complain when they get cut off. But, as I explained in the Q&A um, episode that we did a, a couple of weeks back, you shouldn't be letting people get to that point anyway. You should be managing their drinking because if you were a bartender, as opposed to a member of bar staff, who is just there to purely make drinks and uh, go home, if you're a bartender, your job is to look after those people at your bar. And you're not looking after them if you let them get so drunk that they're going to be falling over and they become a danger to themselves and others. So just purely make sure you are looking after them, make sure that they have uh, water by the side of them. This is a beautiful thing that came up in one of the bar rescues a little while ago that I was watching where they were um, they were told by the team you need to give water to every one of your guests with their drinks um, and it doesn't stop them getting drunk. Uh, they will still get basically, they'll still enjoy themselves but they'll be able to drink over a much longer period. They won't get dehydrated and they won't get falling over drunk. They will be happy drunk and they will be having a good time. So 
make sure you're offering water to your guests, that kind of thing, and you will pretty much avoid having wasted people knocking around your bar. And you try to get personal. This is the number one, apparently. Don't tell your bartender to smile. Don't ask if she has kids, whether this is her full-time job or uh, or not is none of your business. Your bartender is all for being cordial, but customers are quick to cross the line. Your bartender is here to take your order, make your drink, and take your money. Um, Well, okay, but surely a big aspect of being a bartender is the social side of it and um, being somebody that your customers want to hang out with. That is why they're going to come to the bar rather than buying a six-pack and sitting at home. So if you don't want to chat and you're not the kind of person that's social, then either work out with your boss a way that you can work the service bar so you are literally just uh, interacting with the waiters and making drinks for the tables, um, then you won't have to talk to people. You won't have to um, interact with your customers. But if you want to be a good bartender, you want to make good money, and you want to uh, become a legend in your town so that guests keep coming back and asking for you, you've got to chat to them. Yeah, you don't have to be um, you don't have to be spilling the the complete life story and all of your woes and your troubles and whatever else. Uh, you can create a character. You can be whoever you want to be behind the bar. You don't have to be yourself if you don't want to be. Um, but to say that people asking you about yourself and that sort of thing is a problem, I don't get it. Uh, I don't see that that would be a problem for pretty much any bartender that I know, especially the ones that think of themselves as bartenders as opposed to bar staff. And this is a big, big difference in the UK at least. Uh I know in the States, bartender is pretty much the generic term, but in the UK, if you think of yourself as a bartender, you are someone that's proud of your job, and this is what you do. Um, So, you know, that's ten things that your bartender hates about you uh, that I found online, and there's a lot of these that go around. Um, I did write a similar article myself, which was uh, ten ways to get served faster at the bar, and it's more positives. It's things that you can do to get noticed quicker, to um, keep the bartender on your side and and to make sure that you are being a good customer as much as anything else. Um, you can find that on the bartenderhq.com website as well and have a read of it. Uh, one more that comes up in a lot of these articles, it's not in this particular one, but I want to mention it, and it is uh, ordering mojitos. Um, for some reason, bartenders hate making mojitos, according to the internet. Now, I was never keen on it when I was at TGI Fridays, uh, and I'll tell you exactly why. The bar was not set up for it. We were never... Because it wasn't a hugely popular drink at the time, the bar was set up for maybe doing five or six mojitos a night. Uh, It's become a lot more popular since then, and I think it's probably peaked and it's on its way back down again now because other stuff is coming back into vogue. Um, But if you have a bar where you sell a lot of mojitos... Why would you hate making mojitos? All you need to do is look at your bar and think to yourself, right, we make a lot of mojitos, let's make it easier to make mojitos. So make sure you've got all of your limes prepped, all of your mint prepped, all of your sugar syrup or um, sugar cubes or whatever kind of sugar you're using in your particular mojitos. I personally think sugar syrup works the best. Um, but I mean, here's a here's a quick story. One night in Dubai, I think we served 147 mojitos to one party, and that was uh, a private party that one of the sheikhs had organised, uh, where the majority of the guests actually parachuted into the bar. So this was a high end party. I think they spent about 40,000 dirhams, which is about 10,000 uh, pounds, eight ten thousand pounds, something like that. Uh, within the space of three hours on a private party. They had 147 mojitos. We had the stock. We had the uh, the mint. We were ordering two to four kilos of mint a day, uh, of mint leaves, purely for making mojitos and mint, uh, mint lemons, which is a hugely popular drink in Dubai, which is basically like a, a fresh lemonade uh, made with uh, blended mint leaves as well. Very popular over there. So if you have one of these drinks, or the other one that always comes up is uh, ordering in dribs and drabs. So if you're um, if you're placing an order, make sure you know your order before you come up to the bar. That does make sense. Um, but there's also a lot of bartenders that will 
listen to the first couple of items that they say and then go off and make them and then come back and then be annoyed that they've got other items that they want to order. If you take their order and say, is that everything? Then you're going to get that whole order in one place and you're not going to have that issue that annoys bartenders. So that's that's the kind of uh, crux of this podcast, actually, is all of these things that the internet says we hate, they're pretty much all our own fault. Um, so look at the things that really wind you up. In fact, if uh, if these aren't covering the stuff that winds you up at work, write down a list of the things that really annoy you and then look at them again and say, well, how can I fix that? Because it's not the guest's fault. The guest is there for an experience and they want a good experience. And it's up to us to fulfill that experience or somebody else will do it for them. Um, so... And if there's anything on your list of things that you hate about your customers that you can't think of, well, this is how I can help. This is how I can reduce this problem. Drop me an email, david at bartenderhq.com. I would love to hear from you, and I'd love to hear what it is that we can't fix ourselves um, that we hate about our customers, apparently. Uh, Because if there is something like that, and I can't come up with an answer for you, um, I will send you a bar blade. I'll send you a bar blade, just as a, well done, you beat me. Um, All right, so there's a challenge for you guys. Find something that you really hate about your um, customers or something that really winds you up that happens in your bar. And if we can't find a solution for it, I will send you a bar blade. Deal. Okay, so drink of the week. Uh, I was working at Reflex in the Arcadian in Birmingham last night, which is the uh, nightclub that I... Um, help out at. I was supposed to be at a private booking, but unfortunately they cancelled that morning, so I ended up going and helping out at the club. Um, And the club had got a bunch of gingerbread syrup that was from a previous menu item left over, and they were like, what can we do with this? Okay, so we did a quick internet search, found a couple of drinks, and one of them, uh, which we tried out and everyone seemed to love, including the ladies, which is really cool, um, is called uh, Ginger Jack. And all this is, is uh, an ounce of Jack Daniels, half an ounce of gingerbread syrup, and two ounces of uh, apple juice. Shake it, give it a good shake, and uh, strain into a like a little rocks glass over ice and it is delicious the girls were going crazy for this and normally obviously whiskey drinks are more generally geared towards the guys um so it was a nice change that the ladies were loving the jack daniels so uh go with the one ounce if you want to ounce and a half will also work and then up your up your other ingredients to match so three quarters of an ounce of gingerbread and uh three ounces of apple juice and it was really tasty Give it a little squeeze of lime on top as a garnish, and that is good to go. Okay, so tips for tips. uh, The usual segment where we go through a few different things that you can do to make a little bit more cash behind the bar. Um, And today's is teamwork. Now, I do recommend, uh, obviously, if you've got a multi-space bar uh, with multiple service points, uh, multiple stations... um, that bartenders don't move across between one station and the next um, because obviously that slows down your service and that sort of thing. So what I'm not advocating is that you keep going and helping each other out throughout the shift, but you need to be friends with the other bartenders. You don't want to have any animosity. You want to be able to work as a team. For example, if one of you runs out of a certain spirit, uh, you can always throw them your bottle uh, if they shout it out. <clears throat> work as a work as a team um, behind the bar and your guests will get a much better kind of feel for the atmosphere between the people that work there. It's very, very quick uh, for, uh, for customers to notice when there's a bad vibe between people and I'm very lucky at the reflex that everyone that works there, everyone gets on. We are like a little family, although there's no sort of family members as such. Um, working there. I mean, we've got a married couple, actually, and me and... Yeah, ignore that bit. Um, There are loads of us that are actually sort of mini-families, but the whole team works as one big family, and we go out together, and we have a good uh, good time. So all this is is basically making sure that you and your bartenders are having a good time together, you're working as a team, and you can basically 
look after your guests even better when you're all working, pulling in the same direction, rather than get off my station, that's my guest. Keep your stations to yourselves, but know that ahead of time. And uh, there shouldn't be any sort of conflict that your guests can pick up on while you're working. Um, and that good atmosphere, that good vibe will um, will flow across to your guests and you will make far more money when you're smiling. So that's it for this week's bartenderhq.com podcast. Please do me a favour and tell another bartender about this podcast. If you have found any value in this podcast and there's things that you enjoy about it, things that you've learnt from it, just tell the bartenders that you work with. I want to try and get the message out with this. Um, feel free to share it on your Facebook page, your Twitter, please. And tweet at me. I'm on Bartender HQ on Twitter. Uh, I'd love to have a chat with you guys. There's uh, a bunch of people that I'm actually chatting to at the moment on Twitter. So come and join the conversation. We're having a great time. Uh, as I say, find us on Facebook. Share this with as many people as you can. And I would love for this to become a really big community of bartenders helping each other. Um, so, until next time, thank you very much. Have a great week and make some money this weekend. Thanks for listening to the BartenderHQ.com podcast. Find us on Facebook and Twitter at BartenderHQ.